536 now. One Eugene company says despite the recession, business is good. Garage Games develops video games and puts them on the web where they have more than a million registered users. The company has been in Eugene since 2001 and continues to grow. Two years ago, Garage Games employed about 15 people. Today, nearly 100 people now work there. Last year, the company launched nine new games on its website, instantaction.com, to a diverse group of users looking for inexpensive entertainment. People are playing of, of all games, all ages. They're playing at home, they're playing at work, uh, they're playing on their cell phone, they're playing all over the place. So gaming has just become part of our culture now. But do you have any idea what goes into developing a video game? A lot, as we found out tonight on New Source at 5. The folks at Garage Games gives us a behind-the-scenes look at how a game goes from an idea to actual play and all the talent involved in making it a success. That's tonight at 5 o'clock. And now, more news with Matt Templeman and Renee McCullough. One Eugene company says, despite the recession, business is good. Garage Games develops video games and puts them on the web. Yeah, and so what does it take to create a game hundreds of thousands of people want to play? News Source 16's Kelly Warner is here with the answer. It's estimated that at least four out of every ten households in this country have at least one working video game console. And that doesn't take into account how many people play games online. Tonight we get a behind-the-scenes look at how Garage Games has turned gaming into a growing business. Log on to instantaction.com and you'll discover what Garage Games is all about. <laughs> Last year we launched nine games. The company has been in Eugene since 2001 and specializes in social interaction gaming. So when people are online, they're interacting with real people, they're playing against real people. It's not a passive experience. It's real play in real time. The games on the site are designed for players 13 years and older, and there are a lot of choices. So the most popular game right now is Fallen Empire Legions, which is a first-person shooter similar to what you experienced with Halo. There's Ace of Aces. Which is a World War I flight simulator dogfight game. We also have Galcon, which is a real-time strategy game like Risk. That's just to name a few. But to understand how these games are made, we need to start at the beginning. Each game starts with an idea and grows from there, from initial sketches to detailed characters. Here we have the main character from our game Rocketball. Christopher Flanagan is a 3D artist and animator. He says it can take about a month just to develop a character's movements. Pretty much any character is going to have to run around, so you're going to be doing a run forward, a run backwards, a run to the right, a run to the left, usually a jump, maybe a fall down and die. The more complex the game, the more animations are needed, sometimes several hundred. Once a game has a working prototype, it's placed on the company's website, where it continues to be developed. That's where the company can get feedback that really counts from the people who play the games. And so this allows us to kind of determine, well, what's fun now, and continue to build on that and make it even more fun. Um, and if it's not fun, kill it and kill it early, as opposed to investing millions of dollars. Watch your fire, don't shoot your teammates. The company also tests the games to make sure that they're compatible with many different types of computers. Oh, I got oh, killed. No. We joke about how little time we actually get to play games for fun because we spend all day, you know, trying to create games. And creating games is actually very hard work. And it requires a large team to get it done. Employees like Justin St. Clair, whose job is, in a nutshell, to work the bugs out of the game. The technology of of getting high quality products out there on the web so that the end user can not have to worry about what makes it tick, can just enjoy the overall experience of, of the game. And Ben Vesco. If you're going to want your character to have things like a heavy suit of armor, then you'll need Ben's help. He's the link between the game and your computer's browser. Well, somehow your browser has to tell the game to put you in that gigantic heavy suit, uh, and I help that happen. I help that data flow through that channel to the game. Now, while these guys don't play games all day at work, they admit they are gamers. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I've been playing games ever since uh, I was a little kid uh, on the Commodore 64 in the early 90s. Like somebody who builds a race car might like racing, we build a, a game because we like games. So they have an appreciation for the work they're doing, aiming every day to make a game that stands up to what they say is the real test. The game that we're making now, 10 years from now, is someone going to say, do you remember Legions? That was the best game ever. Ever since Legions, every first-person shooter has been downhill from that. So it's not so much about the technology as the experience that people are having. Where's everybody?
Now, the company's site has more than a million registered users right now. It's free to play, but if you want to improve your characters with, say, fancy armor or paint jobs or things like that, there is a charge. Now, if you want to check it out, we've put a link on our website at kmtr.com. Just click on News Links. Back to you. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Kelly. Garage Games does monitor its website and chat forums for inappropriate behavior by its users. It says it can and will kick somebody off the site if there appears to be a